this. This, mate. My cave, man. Woo! First things first then, how that on? Wow, these steps. A bit damp, got a handrail to hold on to. A bit steep. I see why you need an hour that on. But what's your head in here? I'm early Diddy. <laughs> I'm glad I've got an hour that on. Oh, poo. That's the torch. Ultraviolet. There you go, so I'm actually underneath. Underneath the world. <coughs> oh! <laughs> it's a bit tight. So, 300 million years ago, Yorkshire and the Lake District all used to be underwater. And the sea naturally formed this cave. And 200 million years, the world come up and England at one point used to be attached to Africa. So what's going on underneath here is 300 million years ago, the sea creatures, leaves and all that bits and pieces obviously all lived the life happily and then conked out and built layers and just stacked and stacked and stacked and over the time has formed the limestone and what's happening is the water is dripping through the limestone which is giving us calcianite if i pronounce that right hopefully so over several hundred years, it forms your like icicle from the top and from the bottom. And when they join together, it's called a column. And here's some columns. So those columns took 4,000 years to grow. Mad in it. Imagine the age of that. This down here. A very wild Yorkshire. So this is Wolverine. And then what I've got to do is go all the way back up here to where I've just come from. And then go into Deer Cave and go underneath the road I've just driven on. Violet light is doing is pulling all the calcimite out. See where it looks white on camera, but it's actually ultraviolet colour. It's really clever. See where it all is, look.
And where we are, just coming into Deer Cave. So this is Deer Cave, because when they come down here and had a look around, they found some deer bones. Oh dear. So it goes to show how long deers have been around. They seem to think something happened and some deers got down here and trapped many thousands of years ago. It's just a shame the camera can't pick right far up because it's this. The way the light's all shining. Hey, can you see me now? I'm a caveman. So they've kindly let me in early. So I'm allowed to go down to the cabins early, which is awesome. Could you live in these caves? A caveman called Jeff Workman did for 105 days. That's awesome. I wonder what he did. It's certainly a little bit wet. Definitely nowhere you can get a shower from. It's a little bit dark without any lights on. It's lovely. There is options there to come down when the light's on. If you prefer it with the lights on. Stunt Cross Cabins is an area of network tunnels underground which stretches 6.3 kilometers. Most is only accessible to professional cavers. Some areas are still unexplored. What else could they find? If they found Wolverine bones. Oh, my head! If they find <laughs> What else can we find? Who's helmets? Job done. So we're Santa just around the corner. We've only got the Santa's Grotto. Ooh. What does he have for me this year? <laughs> A bag of coal, probably. I'm a bad bum. <laughs> We've got a preview on TV, you need to know where you're going. Right guys, so that's Stunt Cross Cabin done and come out into the pitch black haven't I? I'll definitely give... Right, morning guys. So here we go, that's Stunt Cross Cabins. What a lovely day, but the wind's still picking up a little bit. I just thought I'd pop over to the main road and just show you the view, what we can have. And also, if you can park your van down over here, but it is got a, a very slight slant. Obviously, if you've got some ramps, you can level yourself out. It'd be no dramas whatsoever. You can wake up to this amazing view. But where I am, I'm just up here in this corner. Keep out of the wind, because obviously I've got really bad wind, sorry, next to the fan. <coughs> and it gives me the cough. Can't blame anything else. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had a real good night's sleep. It's been lovely and quiet, even though you're near the road, I didn't hear nothing whatsoever. I strongly recommend having a pop and stopping for the night. Obviously you could chill out with a couple of beers, which is what I did last night. I apologise about that. The battery literally, did, I just come out and then the, the, the battery died of death. And then I popped down into Grassin and uh, went to the Devonshire Arms. I had a quick pint and then popped back home. Well, home, yeah, <laughs> some close cabins. Uh, and then had a couple in, in the van and then went to sleep. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this light right. It's all a little bit dark. So, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pop down to Feston Reservoir and do a reservoir walk. It's planned in about six miles, six, seven miles. So, I shall see you at the reservoir. See you, bye. All right, 
was part at Swinsey Reservoir in the Dales. There's two back-to-back -back reservoirs here. If you go around them both, you've got approximately eight miles walk. I'm just going around Swinsey Reservoir, which is about a three mile, three mile walk. <clears throat> Coming through all the woods and things, got my camera with me, so I'm hoping to try and get some photos of the woods, if I can. If not, just enjoy the hike in the rain, again. <laughs> but never mind, it's better to be out still, isn't it? So I did stay here for the night. It's free, free parking. But at the minute, they're literally building all the cameras for the APN and it'll be parking fees 24 7 so you will be able to stay the night allegedly in the van anyway I don't know the prices of things at the minute because they're still building it so I can't advise on that but it's good for those that uh, are looking to park up in the Dales you get the nature around you and everything, which I think is brilliant. I really enjoy it. Uh, a lot of the prices around here tend to be about five to ten pounds for the night parking, car parks and things like that, which I don't think is too bad really. Um, there's toilet facilities, uh, loads of parking, nice and flat. So the tea room's closed, but we can go to the hall. At least we've got an option for a brew. That'd be a brew and a slice of cake, can you? I mean, it kind of defeats the object of going for a walk in some aspects, but, you know, got to be done sometimes. The walk so far is absolutely ace. I mean, obviously it's open, so I'm getting battered with wind and the rain but I ain't bothered about that it's nice and flat, plenty of trail running going on here walking, dog walking, you've got bike rides I said earlier you've got the park up for horses so you've got horses out and about it's quite good, route for everyone I'm just seeing a, a hero for England Mentioning no names, just in case he's out here again. So well chuffed with that. So, I'll probably catch you guys at the van. Because there's not really much to show around here. It's just a circular route of a uh, puddle of water. So, I'll just catch you guys in a bit. See you, bye. There we go, we're done. Six and a half miles. It's perfect for a 10k run. And just, I've just seen the sign as well. It's good for bear, bird of prey as well. They get long-eared owls come in here yearly to breed. And we get a lot of osprey as well that come in the springtime and feed on the fish in the lake. So a bit of all-rounder as well. I'd even say to a point you can push a push chair as well. I wouldn't like to go for a, a wheelchair personally because there is a, a few up and down bits, but I can't say depending on your strength, there's no reason why. Why not? See you bye. Right, so at the van, had a nice coffee. Oh yes! Coffee! So I've got some energies. Wiggle, wiggle, don't stop. 